Hello aspirants, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Today, 4th September, displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss. The first article, Sender gives note to defense proposals worth 1.44 lakh crore. This article is taken from the Hindu. And the second article, the National Company Law Tribunal seeks go first officials response on liquidation plea. This article is taken from the Lime Mind. And the third article, China hits Canada with the anti-dumping probe in tip for Tatmo. This article is taken from the Hindu. And without much delay, let's begin our discussion. Before moving to the discussion, we have two important announcements. We know that the prelims of UPSC is getting tougher every year. Therefore, to boost the prelims pressure, the Shankar IS Academy has opened admission for pre-storming UPSC prelims to series 2025 batch 1 and the batch 1 will be started on 6th to September 2024. Link for the registration will be given in the description. Do register and boost your UPSC preparation. And the second important announcement is Shankar IS Academy's All India UPSC mains open mock test 2024 will be started soon. Link for the registration will be given in the description. Do register and boost your UPSC mains preparation. And without much delay, let's begin with our first article. Look at this newspaper article taken from the Hindu. Center gives note to defense proposals worth 1.44 lakh crore. That is the recently the Defense Acquisition Council chaired by Defense Minister Rajna Singh on Tuesday accorded acceptance of necessity. It is the preliminary step of long procurement for 10 capital acquisition and uh, that worth around 1,44,716 crore. And the procurement includes seven stealth brigades under the Project 17B, future ready combat vehicles for the army as a replacement for the main battle tank, air defense fire control radars. It also includes drone air 228 aircraft and next generation fast patrol and uh, offshore patrol workers. So in this background, we will discuss more about the Defense Acquisition Council uh, from the prelims point of view. So Defense Acquisition Council, it is the highest decision-making body for the defense purchases in India and it works under the Ministry of Defense. And it is responsible for providing streamlined and integrated approach to the defense procurement and it is established in 2001. In 2001 means it is after the Kargil War. After the Kargil War, there was a severe concern about the security of India. Therefore, a group of ministers in parliament recommended establishment of of a council to ensure uh, the better security of India. Therefore, as a part of that recommendation in 2001, the Defense Acquisition Council was established and the Defense Acquisition Council's primary focus area are giving approval to the purchases and also providing strategic direction to the armed forces and promoting indigenization and self-reliance of India in the field of defense. Coming to the or composition and organization of Defense Acquisition Council, like we already said, it is chaired by the Defense Minister of India and it also includes other members such as junior defense ministers, chiefs of armed forces, Navy and Air Force, Defense Secretary, secretaries uh, from uh, defense production, defense research and uh, defense finance. And it also includes vice chief of defense staff and uh, special secretary. And apart from this, it also has member secretary and he is the deputy chief of defense staff. What are the major functions of Defense Acquisition Council? The first major function is capital acquisition or procurement. That is, the Defense Acquisition Council is responsible for approving major defense purchases and projects for the next 15 years. And the second one is acceptance of necessity. That is, the Defense Acquisition Council will agree that certain defense projects are needed and therefore it is responsible for providing acceptance of necessity. And the third important function is categorization of project. The projects will be classified into three that is buy, buy and make and make. So what is this? Buy means the entire technology or the entire project will be bought from another nation. Buy and make means some part or the significant part of that technology or an equipment will be uh, bought uh, from that nation and later developed in the India. And the last one is make that is the, the entire technology and or the equipment will be developed in India. So this is how the projects are classified by Defense Acquisition Council. And the next important function will be project monitoring that is ensuring project progress and addressing issues related to the development and uh, implementation of the projects. And the last one is decision implementation that is like we said ensuring the decisions are properly Im implemented by different boards of the defense ministry that is once a decision is taken in the defense acquisition council it will be passed down to different departments like defense production defense research and defense finance so it is the responsibility of the defense acquisition council to ensure that the decisions are properly implemented by the relevant boards coming to the important agreements or achievements of the defense acquisition council the first major achievements is the procurement of the advanced light helicopters in 2023 and it was purchased by indian coast guard uh, for the better research and rescue in the Indian Ocean. And the second uh, important achievement is next generation coverts. Coverts refers to warships. They are very small in size and they are very easy to, to navigate through the sea. Therefore, uh, next generation coverts were... And the next important achievement was the procurement of next generation coverts. 
corvette corvette refers to small warship they are used to, uh, in ocean and to especially to deal with the uh, suspicious submarines and uh, it is purchased by the indian navy to bolster maritime security and the various naval missions in the indian ocean and the third important achievement was mig 29 and su 30 mki aircraft in 2020 so from the name itself we can see that both the technologies are both the technologies are bought from russia and the mig 29 and uh, su 30 mki they are uh, dual or twin engined engine aircraft and it is bought by the indian air force to modernize combat fleet and enhance air defense capabilities and the next important agreement was strategic partnership model it is to boost the indigenous defense manufacturing and encourage us private partnership and reduce dependence on import so it is uh, it is signed in the year 2017 to promote the indigenous manufacturing of defense products and also encourages private partnership and reduces india's dependence on import from uh, various nations like russia and the usa and uh, the last uh, important achievement is emergency purchase of ammunition that is in for this the defense acquisition council has authorized rupees 300 crore and it is to ensure that armed forces remain prepared with adequate ammunition adequate ammunition for immediate needs so in this discussion we discussed uh, what is defense acquisition council and what are the functions performed by the body and what is the structural organization so with this understanding try to answer this prelims practice question the question is with the reference to the defense acquisition council in india consider the following statement the statement one the defense acquisition council is the highest decision making body for the procurement of defense equipment in, in india and statement to the defense acquisition council is chaired by chief of defense staff and uh, third statement one of the key functions of, of the defense acquisition council is to ensure the acquisitions are made in accordance with the defense procurement procedure which of the following statements given above is or are correct option a 1 and 2 only option b 2 and 3 only option c 1 and 3 only and option d 1 2 and 3 the correct answer is option c 1 and 3 only let's see why the defense acquisition council is chaired by the chief of defense staff here the statement goes wrong it is stated by the defense minister of india therefore the statement 2 is incorrect statement 1 and 2 are correct with this understanding let's move to the next article look at this newspaper article taken from the live mint national company law tribunal seek go first officials response on liquidation plea so uh, this article is talking about that the go first airlines is currently undergoing the corporate insolvency resolution process therefore the national company law tribunal sought the response of go first airlines on liquidation plea so without much delay let's begin the discussion in this discussion we will be focusing on national company law tribunal and the national company law appellate tribunal from the prelims point of view first we will start with the national company law tribunal it is a quasi judicial authority established under section 408 of the company act in 2013 so national company law tribunal is a quasi judicial authority to deal with the indian uh, companies affairs and it replaced the company law board which was established under the companies act 1956 so before the national company law tribunal we had a company law board to deal with the corporate affairs or the disputes between the corporates this establishment of through companies act 2013 we replaced the company law board and established the national company law tribunal and coming to the case of national company law appellate tribunal it, it is an appellate body so what is the difference between quasi judicial and appellate body so quasi judicial in the sense it is an entity which, which has similarity to the court of law but it is not uh, you know linked to the major judiciary system but in the case of appellate body it is established to, to hear appeals from the lower body so in the case of national company law appellate tribunal it hears the appeals against the orders of national company law tribunal it is established under section 410 of the companies act 2013 and coming to the functions of the national company law tribunal it functions like a court of law like i said it is a quasi judicial body therefore it functions uh, like a court of law and it is based on natural justice and uh, it resolves civil corporate disputes uh, through adjudication uh, mediation and also through uh, organizing committees of creditors and uh, debtors and the third important function is it adjudicates insolvency and uh, bankruptcy code 2016 what is this insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 we can simply define that it is a unified code to deal with the recovery of asset for example uh, before the uh, 2016s ibc we we had a lot of overlapping laws to deal with the recovery of asset but in 2016 we established this ibc under this if a person or a company fails to uh, falls into insolvency so before that what is insolvency insolvency is a situation where a person or a company fails to repay its debt so when a company falls into insolvency that time the credit providers can 
approach the national company law tribunal and this national company law tribunal will organize professionals to study the matter and then they will organize a committee of creditors and this committee of creditors will take the further decision related to the recovery of asset sometimes the creditors can extend the date for of the repayment of the debt sometimes sometimes they will reduce the interest rate or there are a lot of decisions they can take so that is how the ibc uh, or the insolvency bankruptcy court 2016 works and uh, next important function is it uh, handles cases under the board of industrial and financial reconstruction and also it handles cases that comes under the sick industries companies act and uh, finally it deals with the proceedings under the companies act such as arbitration arrangements compromise reconstruction and winding up the winding up is also known as liquidation coming to the case of national company law appellate tribunal like i said it is an appellate body so it hears appeals against the orders of national company law tribunal and it acts as an appellate tribunal for ibc orders so for example if the settlements in under the ibc is not comfortable then the creditors or debtors can approach the national company law appellate tribunal and it serves as appellate tribunal under the competition act and also appeals against the competition commission of india so coming to the organization and composition of the two bodies we have uh, first we will see the national company law tribunal it has a president and the other members the president is appointed by the central government in consultation with the chief justice of india and it also includes members appointed by the central government on recommendation of selection committee and and uh, what is the qualification for the president of national company law tribunal the president must be a, a judge or chief justice of high court of india or uh, he should have or she should have at least five years experience in the high court and coming to the national company law appellate tribunal it has chairpersons and members chairperson is typically a former or an incumbent supreme court or high court judge and uh, technical members and the body also has technical members and they have special knowledge uh, related to investment and uh, handling of economy and uh, finally the appointment process for the national company appellate tribunal involves consultation with the chief justice of india and selection committee so under the topic national company law tribunal we discussed the difference between national company law tribunal and the functions and composition of national company law tribunal with this understanding try to answer this prelims practice question which of the following statements is or are correct regarding the liquidation process under the insolvency and bankruptcy court 2016 so the first statement liquidation can only be initiated if the resolution plan is rejected by the creditors committee statement two: the liquidator is responsible for distributing the proceeds from the sale of corporate debtors asset among the stakeholders and statement three the national company law tribunal directly supervises the liquidation process so se select the correct answer using the code given below option a one and two only option b two and three only option c one and three only and option d one two and three the correct answer is option a one and two only the statement is incorrect because the national company law tribunal can initiate the process of liquidation but it will be looked after by the liquidator appointed by the national company law tribunal so that's all with this topic let's move to the next topic look at this newspaper article taken from hindu china hits canada with the anti-dumping probe in tit for tat move what is this article is all about recently the canada imposed a tariff on chinese electric vehicles and in response to that china launched an anti-dumping investigation into canola import from canada canola is a plant it is a genetically modified version of rape seed and this has brought a trade crisis between the canada and china and china cited that the large scale import of canola from canada has significantly affected the domestic price of rape seed so in this background we will try to understand more about the dumping and how it is affecting the nation first we will see what is dumping dumping means selling a product in another country at a lower price than its domestic price or production cost and there are a lot of motivations behind this dumping it includes capturing the market share eliminating the fellow competitor and also disposal of surplus sometimes the toys can be made up of the waste of plastics or industrial waste therefore uh, it the dumping can be also a part of disposing waste also. so we will see and situation this is country a and this is country b so what happens is in country a a product for a, let's take a toy is produced at the rate of 100 or sold at the rate of 100 in the country b the same toy is produced at the rate of 25 so what happens is as a part of dumping this country b will import this toy at the rate of 25 on a large scale to uh, country a therefore it will affect the affect the sale or the demand of the domestically produced toy in the nation a so this is the situation of dumping so this will it significantly affect the market of the imported country and also it has many other side effects we will discuss them one by one like i said how dumping affect the nation's economy first it will harm the local industries that is it will in reduce the combat competition and uh, it, it can result in business closures and also job loss the best example in history we have is the fall of the indian anti-craft followed by the uh, flooding of mission made uh, 
cotton textile in the India. Before that, we had a great tradition of handicraft in India. So, and coming to the second important effect will be market disruptions. That is, the dumping can result into price fluctuations and supply crisis. And the third effect will be trade imbalance. That is, the dumping from one nation to another nation will create a kind of trade imbalance. That is, this country will, like I said, the country A will be importing more from country B. Therefore, a trade imbalance will be created and it will affect the domestic market of the importer nation and therefore, it will bring a strain between the bilateral relation of these two nations. The best example like we said in the case of China and Canada we can see how the dumping affected the domestic price of rapeseed in China and the fourth important effect will be dependency that is the the countries will become more dependable on import and this can be exploited by the exporting nations for example after a period of time in the initial stage they will give uh, the product at a lesser rate and over period of time they will increase the rate uh, faster and this will not be acceptable or this will bring crisis to the import based nations and how can we deal with the dumping the first includes anti-dumping duties that is uh, the governments can raise the tariff of the dumped products uh, to market to ensure fair market value. And second uh, important step will be countervailing duties that is for example the exporting or the dumping products are subsidized by the exporting nations then the domestic nation or the importing nation can add a tariff or additional duty to ensure a fair play in the market and the third one is wto dispute resolution or wto settlement and in wto we have something called uh, anti-dumping agreement and this anti-dumping agreement will this anti-dumping agreement will not prohibit dumping but it will look after or supervise how the nations are reacting to the dumping and next important step will be trade negotiations that includes using diplomatic uh, negotiations to ensure free and fair trade between the two nations and the last important step will be import quotas that is to establishing import quotas we can limit the import of we can limit the import of abroad products to protect the domestic industries so in this topic we discussed uh, what is dumping and how it is affecting the nation's economy and what are the ways to deal with the, uh, the problem of dumping uh, with this understanding try to answer the prelims practice question the question is consider the following statements the first statement anti-dumping duty is a tariff imposed on imported goods when they are priced below their fair market value statement two the purpose of anti-dumping duty is to protect the domestic industry from unfair competition and statement three anti-dumping duties in India are finally decided by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. Select the correct answer using the code given below. Option A 1 and 2 only, Option B 2 and 3 only, Option C 1 and 3 only and Option D 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is Option A 1 and 2 only. The statement 3 is incorrect. The anti-dumping duties in India are finally decided by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. No, it is finally decided by the Ministry of Finance, not Ministry of Industry and Commerce. Therefore, the statement 3 is incorrect and statement 1 and 2 are correct. With this, we are coming to the conclusion for the newspaper analysis. If you like the video, hit the like button and give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy. And before leaving this channel, don't don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on-time update. Thank you. Have a nice day.